What's up everyone, Super Nerd Daniel coming at you with more of Pokemon Violet the Teal Mask. In the last episode, we arrived in Kitakami, caught a few Pokemon, including a shiny Wooper, which I didn't even expect to find at all. And we met up with some of the side characters, including Carmine, her little brother Kieran, and of course, the person I was looking forward to meeting, Perrin who I am entirely certain is a descendant of Adaman from Pokemon Legends Arceus. But anyway, we have our team here, who I went over last time. Take a look. They're all awesome. And we're going to start heading towards the first of the three signboards that we are assigned to find, along with Kirin, in order to learn a little bit more about the lore of the Kitakabi region. So let's go do that now. All right, so we're here on the Apple Hills. I assume there'll be some apple around here, but first, let's catch a seconds. Hey, nice. Ekans, the snake Pokemon. A very common sight in grasslands and such. It flicks its tongue in and out to sense danger in its surroundings. And you know what? Let's also get some lunch away from this kid real quick. Why not? You've got to greet a person properly if you want to have a pleasant battle. Now let's go! I don't know if I call that a pleasant greeting. You didn't really greet me. You just decided to start dumping on me about battling. Ooh, you have a bell sprout though. That's neat. Pokemon with a really cool shiny. Also, uh, that is, oh God, what is the fit? I can't remember that Pokemon's name. I know what it is. I just can't think of it right now. It's from Alola. I'm gonna catch it here in a second after I kill this bell sprout. Which has poison jab, so I should probably get out of here. Pretty sure swapped right away. Both of my freaking attack types are resisted by this thing. Let's just get Azrael in here real quick to take care of business. All right, Azrael, send this thing to the afterlife. All right, now that's settled. You. Fomantis, that's what it is. Yeah, and it evolves into Lurantis. Okay. Now I remember it was one of the Titan Pokemon from Gen 7. Not Titan Pokemon. Um, Totem. That's what it is. Totem, Titan. How do I get those mixed up? They're completely different. Anyway, Thunder Wave. All right, let's go, Timer Ball. Do your stuff. Fantastic. Fomantis, the sickle grass Pokemon. Many trainers give their Fomantis their own flower pots so they can sunbathe in peace and quiet. Neat. Hey, little cutie Pichu. Pretty sure I don't need you for the decks, but you're definitely a cutie. I hope you have a good day. Now, let's see if there is anything of real interest aside from you know, all these free drugs on the ground. Ooh, Sentret. Nice. Sentret, the scout Pokemon. If it encounters a foe, it will stand up on its tail, making itself look bigger than usual to intimidate them. And yet Sentret doesn't get intimidated. Explain that, Pokedex. I'm almost kind of wondering if you could only get a Diplin by evolution, or if it's something you could find in the wild under certain circumstances. Certainly be interesting to find out. Hopefully I can find it on my own and not get spoiled on it. Hey, there's a bell sprout. Cool. Let's grab this real quick. Bingo! I don't know why I said bingo there. <laughs> bell sprout, the flower Pokemon. It plants its feet deep underground to rehydrate itself. While doing so, it's unable to run away if it's attacked. You know what I've really noticed around here in Kitakami so far, aside from all the different Pokemon? Um, a stunning lack of Gimme Ghoul, and I guess that is technically because they're, you know, like, I guess they're meant to be native to Paldea, and, you know, technically we're not in Paldea right now. But, I don't know, I kind of thought maybe I'd find, like, one Gimme Ghoul around here. Given that they're, I, I guess it's just because I'm used to them being fucking everywhere in, um, 
in Paldea. Like, you can't go more than five feet without hearing that little thing chirping over a coin. So it's so weird to not have freaking, um, um, Gimme Ghoul just around everywhere in this place. But anyway, welcome to Loyalty Plaza. That's the first signboard. Sorry, did, did I startle ya? I, I did mention that I'd hang back and follow you here. We're supposed to read the signboard, right? And take a photo with it, as I recall. Oh, I already know the whole story, so go ahead. You should check it out. That I shall. Long, long ago, there was a fearsome ogre in the land of Kitakami. The ogre made its home in the mountain behind the village, frightening all who entered there. One day, the ogre came down from the mountain in a terrible rage, causing great fear in the village. By some stroke of luck, Ogi Dogi, Monkey Dory, and Fezendipity all happened to be there as well. The three Pokémon laid down their lives to fend off the ogre and sent it back to the mountain. In admiration, the people of the village bestowed upon this brave trio the title of the Loyal Three. Their remains were given a proper burial, and statues of the three were erected above the site. Well, I have the feeling the story is not that simple. Like, it really feels like the story is not as simple as, oh, the ogre is bad and these heroes save the day. The end. The Little Three Monument is right over there. But don't you think the ogre in the folktale sounds kind of cool? Yeah, it sure does. Right? I knew you'd get it, Daniel. It was up against three whole opponents at once, battling it out all by itself. Wowzers, that's so cool. Oh, but I guess most people would just think an ogre like that is scary, huh? I don't think there's any reason to be afraid. When I was little, I went up into the mountains so many times at night, all on my own, and I never once met that ogre. Only scary thing that happened was the grown-ups giving me a real earful about it. Um, so yeah, we're supposed to take a photo right in front of the signboard, right? Indeed. Yeah, don't worry, I gotcha. Aw, he's shy. He's trying to do the little, the little peace sign. Ah, he, he's coming around. He's coming around. Of course, there's me styling like you wouldn't believe. Natural. A total ham for the camera. Just like in real life. That turned out great. You're even good at taking photos. Do you want to try? Oh, no, I didn't mean maybe next time. You know, I... Didn't want to have to come do this whole school trip thing, but, well, it might actually be kind of fun. I get to be out in nature around my hometown and talk to you, Daniel. H hey, if you want, maybe we could set up a picnic? Would you like a sandwich? Sure. Hey, there's Maridon. Where the hell have you been this whole time, by the way? Yeah, what is that thing? Some kind of kaiju or something? <laughs> I mean, you're not super wrong. This is my ride. It's called Maride On. Get it? Ride on? Like, ride on? Get it? D do you get it? No, do, do you get it, though? Do you get it, though? No, 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 Kieran, Kieran. Do you get it? Good one, Jay. A joke's not funny when you have to explain it. It's called Maridon? And you ride on it, huh? I've never seen another Pokemon like this. It's kind of from the future, but you wouldn't get it. <laughs> and it seriously comes out whenever it hears the word sandwich? Never thought I'd actually get to meet such an awesome Pokemon. No wonder you're so strong, Daniel. You're... you're special. Uh, I believe the term you're looking for is main character. So the next 
Er, we should go find the next signboard. It's on the grounds of Kitakami Hall. Um, Kitakami Hall is... Well, first double back to town from here, then there's this bridge you cross, and from there you'll need to climb up the mountainside. I'll hang back for now and meet you there later. Yeah, he's kind of shy, but he's coming around. Don't you worry, Maridon. He'll be a good friend yet. Loyal Three Monument. Long ago, these three courageous Pokémon protected Mossweet Town from destruction. They defeated the ogre that had come to attack the village at the cost of their own lives. The remains were laid to rest with the people's respects below these very statues. Okay, so if they're, like, canonically dead, how the hell are we supposed to catch them? Again, I feel like there's more of the story than, you know, the legends are laying on here. But, uh, you know, still a cool monument, though. Hey, you can finally ride my ride on now. Nice. Guess we had to tempt him out of the Pokeball with a sandwich. Makes sense. Alright, we're here on Reveler's Road, and I assume this is the uh, mountainside we gotta go up. But let's explore these plains just a little bit first. Because you never know what you're gonna find, including a C dot! Nice. See that Lotad looking at me? You're next, buddy. Seedot, the acorn Pokemon. Seedot live in trees, hanging from the branches and leaching moisture. Rows of them can be found dangling from large young trees. Wait, where'd that Lotad go? Motherfucker, did he just disappear on me? Unbelievable. Oop, never mind. You make up for it by catching this furret. That way I don't have to actually manually evolve the Sentra I caught earlier. Of course, it might help if I can actually catch it. That'd be good. Maybe I shouldn't be trying for the first turn timer balls so often. I keep getting a little too cocky with that. Not gonna lie, I'm getting a little cocky with the turn one timer balls because it works a little bit too often for me recently. And I just think I can get away with it whenever. A double edge is fine, honestly. Give yourself a little bit of damage, just makes you a little bit easier to catch you now. Especially because a couple of turns have passed and you're paralyzed. Except you're going to break out of the ball again. Alright, full para. Another turn has passed. Let me have it. Let me have it. Come on. Heal up with the lefties. We're at 69 HP. Nice. Come on, the power of the nice HP has got to give me some boost. Come on. Come on. Very nice. Furret, the long body Pokemon. It is nimble and has a very flexible body. Even if you get a hold of it, it'll slip right out of your arms. Let's see what else is around here. I've seen some Ralt, some Starly. I've seen Cricketune. Starly again. Another Cricketune. Uh, Jacques, who I thought wasn't going to be able to make it here. You liar. Also, there's an Apom in the background. I'll catch that in a sec. Oh, hello, hello, Daniel. Enjoying that school trip, are you? Why are you... Hey, hey, I came to check on how you're doing. I am your homeroom teacher, after all. Once I got here, I decided to do a bit of research on the Pokemon of Kitakami and... Oh, that's right, sorry. I got so engrossed in my own research that I actually forgot... I, I forgot to come find you, didn't I? Speaking is hard. Well, how about I make up for it by treating you to a picnic? I thought something like this might happen, so I borrowed all the usual picnic things from D uh, Director Clavel. We're just gonna find. Hey! It's a uh, Gulpin. Almost a Swalot. That's the evolved form, Daniel. Cute little Gulpin, though. Dig in! Hope you like the sandwich I made. It may, um, look a bit strange, but I can assure you it tastes great. I don't get out much, so this kind of field work sure wears me out quick. I can't believe how you kids run all over the place for your treasure hunt. You're really something. Oh? Could there be something in my basket?
A, a Pokemon egg? Hello? A Pokemon egg appeared in the basket! Quite the mystery, isn't it? I only brought Gulpin to this picnic with me, and yet... Did you put the egg in the basket? Heh, <laughs> can't get anything past you, can I, Daniel? You know about the Pokemon eggs you can find during picnics, right? Whenever a trainer doesn't have the means to care for an egg they find, they can have it sent to the Academy, where we'll take care of it. But then I thought, say, wouldn't it be better to have a great trainer raise the Pokemon instead? So I brought this egg with me. Are you turning me into an egg babysitter? Is that what this is? <laughs> I know it's odd of me to come all the way to Kitakami just to hang hand over a Pokemon egg. Yeah, a little bit. But I knew it would be safe with you, Daniel. Yep, still using the Pokedex. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I guess I know where to find you now. Get this Colossal, and then we're gonna run around with this egg until I hatch it. We're gonna see what it is, so BRB. All right, I lied. I'm gonna catch a Sapom first. Hey, there we go. Apom, the long tail Pokemon. Its tail moves with greater dexterity than its hands. Making deft use of its tail, Apom lives high among the treetops. Neat. Alright, but seriously, now I'm gonna actually hatch that egg, so, uh, BRB, for real this time. Alright, here we go. Let's see what we get. Hey, a Chimchar! Cute! Alright, but back to business, though. By catching this Vulpix! Nice! Vulpix, the Fox Pokémon! As its body grows larger, its six warm tails become more beautiful, with a more luxurious coat of fur. Now, I'd really like to see if I can find that goddamn low tad that just vanished on me a couple battles ago. Because I know there's a low tad just kind of hanging out around here. I would like to catch one. I kind of need it for the Kitakami Pokedex. Hey, there it is. Little bastard. Lotad, the Waterweed Pokemon. Lotad will gather in lakes that have good water quality. The surfaces of these lakes sometimes become covered in Lotad leaves. Alright, I think it's time to head up towards the mountaintop. And let's see if we can't get that second signboard, unless we find something more interesting along the way, question mark? Ooh, Swinub. I wasn't expecting to find you on a grassy plain. I thought maybe it'd be somewhere in a cold environment, but hey, not complaining. Also, uh, I'm not going to be able to Thunder Wave you because I'm pretty sure you're half ground even in this state, so uh, it's a little awkward. Um, You know what? We'll bring in Esperoba too. Esperoba hasn't had any screen time lately. I think he'll hit you with a Weeba Wooba Weep. Maybe let you damage yourself a little bit from the confusion damage. It'll be fine. Oh boy, Earthquake. Yeah, we're gonna need to hit you with this Weeble Weeble Weep real quick. Come on, hit yourself, hit yourself, hit yourself. Damn. That is annoying. Thank God I have Opportunist. Not that I think you're going to hit me with a lot of special attacks, giving you a swine up, but still. Always appreciate a free stat boost. Tough, not that I need it. Swine up, the pig Pokemon. Yep, I was right. Half ground, even in this stage. It rubs its snout against the ground, digging through the soil as it searches for food. Sometimes it digs up hot springs. Ooh, neat. All right, Kitakami Hall. Ooh, setting up for the big festival, I see. Neat. Yo, sweet masks. Oh, I wish I could grab one. 
Just swap between masks like I'm wearing, like I'm playing Majora's Mask. Ah, uh, that'd be cool. Hey, Snorlax. All right, where the heck is Kieran? A little nerd supposed to be... Oh, there's a signpost. He's... Yeah, he's probably going to show up as soon as I look at that thing. Um... I'm assuming I can't really go that way yet, so... Let's just stick to the path. Look at the signpost. S sorry, I'm following you at a distance, so I... I hope you get used to me showing up like this. Yeah, it's fine, honestly. I know the deal. I know the score. The ogre possessed four mysterious glimmering masks. It is said that depending on the mask the ogre donned, the powers of its cudgel will change. Also, what's the word cudgel mean? I have no idea. Actually, can I look that up real quick? Hang on, give me one second here, folks. Cudgel, a short, thick stick used as a weapon. Huh. So apparently, it wields a stick. When wearing the teal mask, it could bring life back into withered greenery around it. When wearing the crimson mask, it could turn a candle's flames into a raging inferno. When wearing the blue mask, it could stop the very flow of a river. When wearing the ashen gray mask, it could easily break the hardest stone in two. Before the loyal three fell, they wrest away three of the ogre's masks, greatly weakening it. But the teal mask is the one it kept. Hence the name. The mask that the loyal three stole are kept over at Kitakami Hall. Everyone in town is scared of the ogre, but me? I really like it. It was strong and cool, and it didn't even care when everyone shunned it. I've always wanted to be like that, ever since I was a kid. I want to be as cool as the ogre. My sis sort of ends up doing everything for me, even when we're at school. I want to try to get stronger, so I can do things for myself, you know? I'm going to become someone people can rely on, then, just maybe, I could be that ogre's friend. Oh, right, a uh, picture. We're supposed to take a picture. You can take the next one, too, if you don't mind, Daniel. Yeah, don't worry, I got you, pal. See, he's warming up. This is a little more active of a pose than the last one. He's getting there, he's getting there. Phew! I knew it was the right call to let you handle it, Daniel. Now, on to the next signboard. Oh, I guess we are supposed to go up that way? Oni Mountain. Ooh. Sick name. If you wanted, we could... Go see the Ogre's Den home? Go see the Ogre's Den home? What? What was that reading? Go see the Ogre's home. It's called the Dreaded Den. Hell yeah. Yes! I really wanted you to see it for yourself, Daniel. So, if you keep climbing up, you'll reach the Infernal Pass. There's a sign before that. If you turn at the sign, you can get to the dreaded den. So, I'll just head on up then. Come along when you're ready. And be careful. Eh, don't worry, I gotcha. It's you I'm worried about, quite frankly. Ooh, hello? Cute little more Pico. Which, of course, I can't paralyze because it's an electric type. Come on, turn one timer ball. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. There we go. More Pico, the two sided Pokemon. It has a small stomach. If it isn't constantly eating the seeds it keeps in its pockets, it will get hungry immediately. I'll catch this timber too while I'm here. Why not? Cool, nice. Timber, the muscular Pokemon. It fights by swinging a piece of lumber around. It is close to evolving when it can handle heavy lumber without difficulty. What's that in the water? Something I perhaps don't have? Nope, that's an Aracuda. It's a shot. Are you fucking serious? 
A shiny Aracuda. It's the second shiny I found in two episodes. What is happening here in Kitakami, dude? There's no way they up the shiny odds. I'm just having ridiculous luck for Pokemon I'm not even looking for. What the hell, man? <laughs> oh, dude, that's going to be real disappointing in episode three when I just don't find a shiny now. Oh, boy. Uh, well, let's get this real quick, I guess. Good thing I decided to take a detour to the river, huh? Eh, while we're up here, let's get this Geo, dude. Or not, because it's going to blow itself up. Damn it. Good thing this wasn't shiny. Jeez. Right, let's try it again with this Geo, dude. Hopefully... The fact that I'm catching it off guard means I can... I don't know if I can risk the timer ball. I'm going to have to quick ball this. Just so we can get the Pokedex data. Geodude, the rock Pokemon. Most people may not notice, but a closer look should reveal that there are many Geodude around. I don't know how you don't notice them with them blowing themselves up all the time. Jeez. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure this is not the cave I was supposed to be going into. That guy, I'm probably nowhere near the place I'm supposed to be at, but I'm just having too much fun exploring. This is what happens when you give me a big open world. I'm going to comb every inch for items and Pokemon and lore. I need me some of that tasty lore. Also elixirs. Hey, Clefairy! Let's get you real quick while I'm here. Gotcha! Clefairy, the fairy Pokemon. On nights with a full moon, they gather together and dance. The surrounding area is enveloped in an abnormal magnetic field. Yeah, you're right. Clefairy do tend to gather and dance under the full moon. Kind of like on Monday nights. Kind of like on the Twitter account, Clefairy Mondays. Please follow Clefairy Mondays. Ah, oh, thank goodness there's a sign here. There we go. Alright, so at least now, I know I'm kind of on the right path. Generally speaking. So I might get there today. Oop, there's the dam. Before I do that, anything of interest over here on this little cliff? No. It's just a little cliff. Alright, never mind. Am I going to be able to latch onto that wall? <laughs> Barely. Alright, let's actually go here. Daniel, did you have trouble getting across that narrow path? Now nah, I just kind of jumped off of like a jackass trying to explore a cliff that had nothing on it. No big deal. <laughs> there it is. The dreaded den. This is supposed to be the ogre's home. At least, that's what everyone says. I come here all the time, but I've never seen it. Maybe a powerful ogre like that won't always show up if it hurts some kind of battle going on. Sounds like a fair plan to me. Alright, let's rock and roll. Why not? All right, though, uh, we should heal up our teams first. Yeah, good idea. Appreciate ya. I'll give it all I've got. I I've got this. You definitely see that confidence rising in him as he bows me more and more and we spend more time together. It's cool to see. That being said, I am still going to have to crush you. Although your Furret is a Furret, not a Centret anymore. So that's already a little worrying. Th this time, I'll put up a good fight. We'll see about that. What's your level at? 62? Okay, yeah, you are definitely a little bit higher than last time. Get a T-Wave you up right off the bat. Can't really risk it. Nice, full para. Alright, let's go for the Volt Switch. Well, bam. Nice half off. Now, who do we bring in is the question. Yo, I don't think Project Satan has had any screen time yet, so let's go. Project Satan, the most evil car ever conceived. Got two full paras in a row. I kind of feel bad. Uh, anyway, Iron Head, let's go. Uh, 
Uh, no, I'll stick with Flamethrower, thanks. Poliwhirl. Oh, Ace Trainer Liam's gonna be happy about this one. Oh, knowing him, he's probably way past this battle by now. Pretty sure he, as I'm recording this, and even as you guys are seeing this on YouTube, like at least as it premieres, he's probably still doing his 12 hour streams. He does love him some Poliwhirl, though. Happy Poliwhirl made it back in for Liam's sake. Shame we gotta kill it, though. And we're finishing off with a Yamma. You know what? We'll keep Project Satan in. It actually is stronger between the two. Nope, same base power. All right. Go for Iron Head just for the flinch chance. Ah. Guess I resist that air cutter. Whew, that was a crit also. Well, time to finish this up. I don't know if that was intense enough of a battle for Ogre Pond. Or, you know, the Ogre, whose name I'm not supposed to know yet. <laughs> oh, man, I lost. But he did put up slightly better of a fight than last time. I knew it. You really are strong, Daniel. How am I ever going to be able to beat you? If the Ogre saw that battle, I'm sure he'd be thinking, that kid's got real strength. And sweet hair. <laughs> See, my school, Blueberry Academy, it's a school that specializes in teaching the art of Pokemon battling. If I was as strong as you, maybe I could aim to be the best trainer there. Let's go have a look at the Ogre's Den. Is that a good idea? I kind of feel like we're intruding on its personal space. Oh, speaking of which... See how dark it is in here? And cramped. Even the floor is all rough and uneven. Living all alone in a place like this would get you pretty miserable, don't you think? Poor ogre. We have plenty of room in our house. I would have totally let it stay with us. You're a sweet kid, Kieran. When can I move in? Nah, th don't be a dick. No, I'm not. I've just always liked the stories about the ogre, that's all. But, but if the ogre really did show up to stay at our place, I'm sure the whole town would freak. And people fear what they don't understand. Slash have only heard about in really one-sided myths. Whoa, no way! The sun's already gone down? I guess we'll have to save the last signboard for tomorrow. Yeah, I was about to say, are we still supposed to be doing that? <laughs> Oh, I almost forgot! Today's the first day of the Festival of Masks over at Kitakami Hall! It's this big event where everyone puts on masks and runs around celebrating. I mean, it's not like you've got to go or anything, but if you wanted to, you know, check it out. Well, it'd be fun. Let's go together. Yeah, why not? It'd be great to go together. There's just a few things we'd have to get ready first, so we should swing by my house before heading to the festival. We live in the northwest corner of the village. It's, um, let's see. I could maybe draw a map. Or you could just let me know and I'll mark it on the map on my phone. Wowzers! It sure is handy having a map that shows you everything right there on your phone. I'm going to ask if I can get a Rotom phone someday, too. I'll be right behind you if you want to head to my family's place first. See you there. Well, that certainly sounds like a plan, Kieran. And I think we'll do that... ...in the next episode of Pokemon Violet the Teal Mask. Had to wait for it to load up first so I could actually do it. But thank you for watching, everybody. Really appreciate you sticking around for the second episode. Cannot believe I got a second shiny Pokemon just out of the blue. Wooper in the first episode, Ericuda in the second. Again, it's going to be real disappointing if I don't find a, a shiny Pokemon in the third episode. But hey-ho, what can you do? 
I'll survive, I guess. But anyway, thanks for watching. Give me a like if you liked it. Uh, leave a comment down below. Answer the comment question of the day. I'll come up with one in post. Here it is on screen now. Bam. There you go. But anyway, really appreciate you sticking around for these episodes of these playthroughs and stuff. And just make sure you're drinking water, okay? Seriously, drink water. I, like, I'm going to drink some water because my voice is starting to crack on me after all this talking. So you should definitely be drinking some water. Can you tell I don't know how to end videos? 